took a leap of love seven years ago, worthy of a rom-com. He proposed to his platonic friend, Jasmine Jane, without ever having dated or kissed. They never even hugged. This is a leap. I don't know if I'd do that. <laughs> He says he just knew the time was right and it was meant to be. What a beautiful story. Take a look at this leap for love. Jazz and I actually met two days in a row. The first at a business convention and the very next day at church. It was my first time attending the church that Jordan had attended. And after church, we exchanged phone numbers. Jazz actually became a part of my friend group. And I never thought about her as being more than a friend, but after a year and a half, God was literally telling me to propose to her. When I told my family, they looked at me sideways, <laughs> but I still kept planning anyway. But leading up to the proposal, it ended up not being a surprise anymore. One day, while Jazz and I was on FaceTime, she overheard my mom walk in a room asking about the proposal. I was in shock. I did not know whether to hang up or act like nothing happened. But what I did know was that I needed to prepare because my friend was going to propose to me. Yeah. <laughs> bam, bam, leap for love. Please welcome Jordan and Jasmine. Congratulations. <laughs> OK. OK. I have so many questions. First of all, how many matching silk sets do y'all have? <laughs> Because you had one on there. What? How many sets? A lot. A lot. A lot. <laughs> That's amazing. Okay, the second thing is, your last name is Tarzan, your last name is Jane. Yeah. Like Jane and Tarzan. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. I mean, my brain is exploding. Okay, Jasmine, let's get to the heart of this. You've had platonic relationships. You've always been suspicious because people want to cross the line. They start out as friends, but they have an agenda. Yes. Chris Rock calls it something else. You'll have to Google it. I won't say what he calls it. <laughs> something in a box that girls often keep guys, like her friends, over off to the side because one day you might want to date them. But you weren't that girl. You never wanted to date your platonic friends, right? No. Ever? No. Okay. And what was it, though, about... You had a hard boundary with Jordan. I did. Like, what was the boundary? It was... It, we, we really didn't even talk about it. It was Give just... me 50 feet? What? No, there were just, you know how like there's just things that you just did not discuss? Oh. Like, so we never even talked about our past relationships. We were such in a progressive place, like after God and just like in self-development internally that it just, we never, it was never a topic so of discussion. So you just laughed to talk, hang out together, but never anything romantic. And we served, so yeah. that's a completely selfless act, right. so. Yeah. And Jordan, you talk about, exactly, Jordan, yeah. you talk about, God telling you to propose to Jasmine. Yes. What was that feeling like? What was that thought through your mind? What did God tell you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> when I say God told me, so usually when God speaks, it's like an impression more than it actually is an actual yeah. voice. So for me, I just kind of stayed in the place of friend to fear. Um, one thing that he shared with me was, is that I didn't need to date to find the person I was meant to be oh. with. Right, so um, so that's what I was living out. And this is this the actual proposal? It is, yeah, okay. yes. What was happening here? So this is where I actually, at my grandmother's house, I actually surprised her um, with that painting. And then when she was showing it to my whole family, she turned around and I was proposing to her. And oh. the, the painting says, the best thing I love about you is the Jesus in you. Oh. <laughs> so you got married six months after in June of 2017, you got married. Yeah. I still love that you just celebrated your seventh anniversary. Has your mother ever gotten over the fact that she walked in the screen and nearly gave everything away? Uh, you know, she doesn't bring it up, but one thing that she <laughs> said, she said to me, y'all know, y'all know y'all need to tell me these things beforehand. You should have told me you was on the phone. <laughs> and now you have a podcast, Friends to Fiance. Yes. I love that you're sharing the story. What's the message that you want folks to get from your love story? Marriage is the most selfless act that one can make. And women, independent women, like that was me, I would just challenge you all to learn the art of submission, which is simply learn the art of agreeability. Um, agreeability? Yes. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Jordan just dropped a whole word on us. <laughs> okay. We're going to have to revisit that lesson in life. <laughs> I wasn't expecting it's a live show. We got to wrap. But you got to come back and talk to us about this. Congratulations. Get your next silk suit ready. Y'all want you back on the show. <laughs>